Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing great. I have a new 1cc video to share today and it's one I'm very excited about, Esprade, which is an early cave game. Uh, and I've been playing this game on and off for, you know, about a year, maybe a bit more. It seemed impossible. It's one of the first shmups I played. It felt pretty much impossible back then. Um, and I never did um, progress all that much through it, but I took the time to sit down and properly learn it starting about a month ago and I finally just got the clear a couple of days ago so I'm excited to share this video talk about the game uh, what I'll do at first is uh, I'm going to share my thoughts um, on the game since the first few stages are pretty easy and, and standard uh, and then um, then I'll get into commentating the mechanics and, and the run a bit more um, so Let's go to the replay section uh, and get the show running. So, yeah, the first few stages are pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, so I thought I'd rather talk about the game. This is the game that is very special to me, as you can probably tell. It is my YouTube icon. Uh, I have a huge poster of it um, in, in my gaming room. So I really like it. I love the theme. Um, I love the art artwork. I think the lore is pretty cool. So this is the game that really speaks out to me. It's pretty much Akira, the manga or the anime uh, as a game. So it's quite unique. I don't think there are all that many, you know, games that are set up in a Japanese cyberpunk psychic power setting it's pretty rare but i'm definitely um a huge fan of it uh the music is is pretty cool especially the bus music i really like it this game so i'm playing on the ps4 um version that was uh released by m2 it's a port that was released a few years ago i think two or three years ago and they added an arranged track which i'm using um, when I'm playing this game and it sounds a whole lot better than the original one I think so another good point another thing to note is um, you know it's a cave game it has really good pattern variety um, and you know overall um, I think it looks fantastic the visual design the style of the game this might be my favorite shmup in terms of visuals I do have um, you know some things to say about the game um i think it has some jank i'll get into the details uh of that a bit later i don't think it's a good beginner game i know i tried to play it when i started playing shmups and it was extremely difficult and i couldn't really make sense of any of the mechanics so i think this is more of an intermediate game um you know it took me about uh 40 hours um to to clear all together this is also counting my early sessions when i had no idea what i was doing so all together it's not actually that hard but there are a few things that make it harder than i think it should be and it's definitely more difficult than the other cave games i've played like death smiles or mushihime or futari original all of those are definitely easier so now you know um on to talk about some of the what I think are some of the flaws of the game. Um, the bigger biggest problem to me is the slowdown. So it has a very specific type of slowdown where it is quite inconsistent. And so the game speeds up or slows down pretty much randomly depending on how many bullets are on screen. And because of this, you know, it, it makes it terrifying to micro dodge in this game, unlike the other games I've played. And for the longest time, I thought, you know, there was maybe a bit of an issue with the hitbox or the movement or whatever, but that's not actually what's happening. What's throwing me off, what was throwing me off is the slowdown. So, you know, it's, I usually like to do a lot of dodging, uh, weaving in and out in bullets, even though it's risky as hell, but it is, to me, it is one of the joys of bullet hells. Um, so you know if you're playing this game you shouldn't do that you'll run into bullets randomly you won't understand why it's happening so you know as a word of advice i'd say if you're playing this you have to play in a very conventional way and you have to dodge you know a bit passively just trying to put um you know position yourselves where 
no bullets will come at you. Uh, I know it's easier said than done, but and it's probably the better way to learn how to play shmups. Uh, but that means you need really good fundamentals to do that. You know, it can't just be dodging the last second because that just it. it a lot of times, in a lot of sections, it just doesn't work. Um, another thing I don't really like about it is it's very punishing on death. So shields are very strong in this game. Uh, shields are pretty much your bombs. Uh, I'll explain that later. So you, you get around four shields per life. You can cha charge them and they do you know pretty solid damage, especially to bosses. So dying when you have some shield gauge left is really bad. You know, it's you should make sure you use all of your shields uh, before you die. On top of that, whenever you lose a life, you also lose some of the items that make it possible to refill your shield gauge. Um, you know, I think you lose 50 or 100, something like that. Uh, so that's an additional penalty. Uh, and most importantly, there is power loss on, in this game. So uh, when you lose, um, you know, uh, your power level, default power level is, is five out of five. And when you lose, I think you get brought down to two. So that means you're pretty weak and you won't um, do much damage. And the issue with, with that is um, to, after dying, to generate um, power items to recover, then you need to destroy uh, bigger enemies. Um, and uh, because you're not doing much damage in later sections of the game, sometimes it's really difficult, if not almost impossible, to bring your power level uh, back. So then you end up having to use more shields to cancel bullets, uh, and then that generates um, power um, power items as well. So overall, you know, you get punished very heavily for death uh, and I think more heavily than in most cave, cave games this is my experience uh, and then finally uh, one final complaint I have about this and I promise this is the last one the difficulty of the game is very backloaded so it's it's all in stage uh, four and five uh, I'd say and this can make uh, runs uh, specifically frustrating. Uh, you know, the final boss especially is quite difficult. Um, and so on repeat playthroughs, uh, it feels like you can sort of breeze through the first three stages. And um, uh, and then, you know, the, the real ga game starts later on. Uh, so it may sound like I'm hating on this game but i actually really like it and without the flaws i just mentioned i think it would be my favorite shmup ever uh, out of all games uh but unfortunately i, I don't think it's quite there uh, right now so for this run i'm i'm playing this was my first clear on the ps4 port which is fantastic it lets you display um your hitbox the hitbox of your character on screen which is really cool and that was not in the original um, so that helps quite a bit because in this game you can see the hitbox is not exactly centered um, you know around your sprite it's pretty much in the upper back of the character so that's also something you need to get used to and and the port really helps with that <coughs> in terms of gameplay so you get a, a normal shot um, you get a focus shot with which is basically uh the same except it slows down your movement speed in usual cave fashion and um and that then um you also get a special shots which differs between characters so here i'm using yusuke which is a character that you know has good movement speed and does a lot of damage with his special shot which is the fire thing uh, i'm using um and i'm using auto fire for the most part because that, you know, it just does a lot of damage, especially to bosses. Um, and, um, you know, on top of those shops, you get a shield button. Like I said, uh, you can you can hold the button to charge it. Um, and, you know, that takes away a bit of your shield gauge at the bottom, which is the light blue gauge that you can see on the bottom left of the screen. There are two score items, two score extends, um, sorry. There's a hidden extend in stage four. We, we're actually pretty close to getting there. And you score pretty much by spraying special shot damage uh, on large enemies and then destroying them while the special shot um, is, is still, the particles, uh, I guess I can say, are still on them. And so, you know, 
there's a very specific timing to this and it's different depending on the character and um, you do that to get a multiplier and then you end up you know uh, destroying the smaller enemies with that mu multiplier to keep the chain going and the the most you can get is times 16 um, i did not you know i did not practice the timing for that so there's very little in the way of scoring in this run um, but that's the way it works and you know what i wanted to do was score just enough to to get the score extent so this is where you get the second um life extent see i just got it it's on top of the uh second subway um train that comes on your right you have to you know just stay on top of it and keep shooting and then you get the item you pretty much have to know where it is otherwise you can easily miss it stage four is again where the game gets kind of difficult you can still do pretty decently by just uh, sticking to your route uh, but this is where you know you have to be a bit more careful and maybe have to use a bit more um, shield to make sure you scrape through so at this point i'm doing pretty well i have five uh, lives but just a little bit of shield left that i'm using on this section just to be safe um my so my strategy um, to get the clear was to micro judge as little as possible um, because as I said as I've said before it's very uncomfortable at least to me uh, on this game um, and then you know I wanted to use all of my shield gauge before dying uh, and face the final boss with as many resources as possible because she's pretty difficult so I found you know from playing that I could take one bad death and by bad i mean you know not optimized like i could die with some shield gauge left but not more than that i'd need at least an average of three lives to get through the the final boss uh, which is a lot um so you know i made it to her uh nine times before this run and i couldn't close it out uh and this you know this one was um you know the run where i actually made it through so this boss the stage four boss is actually quite difficult that's where the game starts you know the difficulty really starts ramping up so you'll see the patterns are difficult the slowdown thing i mentioned um is also you know you can start filling it uh, against this boss uh, and i'm actually doing a lot more micro dodging than i think i should do but you can see i'm sort of flailing around here getting a little scared trying to stay as far away <laughs> from the bullets as possible uh, so the first um, phase is actually not that bad, but it does get more difficult. At this point, I have no shield gauge at all, uh, so I have to be really cautious. There's actually a shield recharge mechanic mechanic in this game where, you know, you have to collect uh, a certain number of items, the red items that you see. For instance, right now I have 75 out of 400. So the first uh, recharge you get at... Um, when you have 200 items and when your shield gauge is somehow uh, depleted uh, and then you know when you get a recharge that number the threshold goes up by uh, 100 so you know 200 300 500 uh, 400 and so on and so at this point i'm at 400 i actually made it through the boss uh, without dying despite having no shield gauge so that's you know pretty decent so i made it to the final stage without dropping uh any life which is you know pretty pretty good for me i had those runs i had a few of those uh but they're they're kind of rare and then this this stage the whole thing in my opinion is difficult it's very precise routing you have to destroy um enemies before they swarm you because they can you can really get overwhelmed very quickly on this game I like to mention the widgets that you can see, you know, on the left and right side of the screens. Uh, I really like those, you know, like the stage layout um, on the right, um, the the sprites uh, of all the enemies, the sprite work. Oh, I, I'm taking my first death here. It's actually not not too bad because this is one of the most difficult sections on the game. That tank on the left takes forever to kill. It's doable without shield, but it's definitely challenging. And so, yeah, the widget helps a bit more. You know, you, you can also see how much um, 
life the bosses have um it's you, you get a ton of useful info i actually play this on um tade tade uh, so you know um vertical screen so i don't use the widgets or at least not not as many but i think they're really cool also they look really sleek i like how you know they have those fit the theme of the game um so yeah i'm pretty huge fan of those m2 boards they're they're pricey but they're really good and one thing i haven't mentioned is this game also have a um so there's a super easy mode but it's actually too easy honestly it's it's very difficult to die on this game uh, and i mean i actually do mean too easy i don't mean it's for beginners it's just it's even boring for beginners um and and there's a custom mode where you can change most of the rules of the game you can um reduce your hitbox for instance you can change a whole lot of parameters uh that is pretty fun obviously you know that's not what i'm playing here i'm playing the um, arcade version of the game um and they have a sort of a range game that's called arcade plus where they added a, a character and a tlb and i haven't really focused on that version yet uh but but i might you know if i can find the time uh, it's pretty good as well but here this is the og arcade version pretty much and so now we're moving on to the you know the final part final section of uh 5a so stage five is divided into two phases this is the boss of the first phase he's actually um this boss is actually kind of awkward uh, there's some rng there where you know the the, the tanks that you can see uh, I don't think there's any specific order uh, to them coming out, you know, on the side, at the bottom, in the middle. So you can definitely get trapped by their shots. You have to be really cautious. Especially here, I don't have any shield, so have to be careful. That around the world dodge I'm doing, you know, going to the top of the, uh, the boss and then down, that helps a lot navigate all the bullets. It makes it a lot easier, but you can still get trapped for sure. The bigger problem for this, see, you can see here, are the um, the purple aimed bullets from the tanks. So here it's going pretty all right for now. The red bullets that you see, they're actually um, revenge bullets. So, you know, you only get them when you shoot the boss. Otherwise, you get none. But you have to be careful not to shoot it too much. Otherwise, see, I'm closing off my escape route here. So I have to be careful have no shield this is gonna be a bit difficult it's doable but yeah I'm, I'm taking a death here so that's a little unfortunate uh the good thing is i did use all of my shield gauge but i could aim for a recharge here you know i was close to um killing the the boss but i couldn't pull through this is where the the game gets really hard so this section you pretty much have to know by route um by heart um you have to know where to go once you know it it's not that um difficult but it's definitely overwhelming at first and see now i'm getting the power items from killing the the larger enemies but it's difficult for me to pick them up because of all the enemies and all the the bullets especially those alice clones um, so I make it through pretty uncave. I, I think at this point I was very nervous because you know, this is a pretty good run. Uh, I have three lives. I'm going to get the final score extend, I think. Uh, you know, I'm pretty close. So on here, I definitely didn't want to take a death. This is why I'm using my shields, um, you know, just to play safe. I've had so many runs where I get close to the end with a bunch of lives and then i end up being greedy with my shield and because the micro dodging feels well kind of dodgy uh, on this game uh it, it it doesn't feel good when you when you lose lives with resources so i'm 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 supposed to get yeah i just got the the final extend so at this point this is the final boss where well, there are two of them but you could consider um the um, our statue to be the first form of gara and so i have four lives um about 50 percent of shield gauge i think this is uh the best i've done at this point you know so i felt like 
at this point i just want to close out the the game so i'm going to use my shields especially since you know on this bus there's a lot of rng so the patterns that you get are random they're randomly chosen out of a pool of patterns and this is one of the worst ones the um you know the purple uh, arrows is it was one i really hate so, yeah so that was an unfortunate death and then i felt like well you know at this point maybe i'm not gonna get the clear even though it was looking pretty good but i know it's still doable on three lives and i've practiced the final boss a lot one one thing you should do if, is if you want to go for the clear keep practicing the final boss because it's quite difficult um you're just not going to pull through without knowing what's coming so now this is the final boss car she has five forms this pattern is really, really deceptive. It looks easy, uh, but um, again, the, the, the bullets do speed up and slow down, you know, kind of randomly. So you have to be really cautious. Um, it's doable without bombing, but I just, at this point, I just want to play safe. But this first phase I'm pretty familiar with. So I'm sort of banking on the fact that, you know, I can do okay on the first phase without using shield too much. Second phase, I think it's kind of the same. I might use one shield. Then I'm keeping most of them for the final two phases, which um, which are, have been more difficult for me. Yeah, so another death here, and I did have some shield gauge, so I do remember being a bit pissed about it. Um, here I'm just, yeah, just going to shield through. And I want to make sure I'm using all of them without uh, before dropping lives. This pattern, I think, is really cool. So I'm usually pretty good at dodging it but you know it's like feels like you know doors that are opening and closing in front of you and you have to be really quick to uh, identify the gaps and go through them so i did have to use uh, a shield but that was that was pretty clutch dodge uh, right there um and if if i didn't make it through then i would have got kind of the clear this i think i'm just gonna shield through this one it's dodgeable but you have to do those huge macro dodges uh, and I did lose a lot of runs to this pattern, uh, despite practicing it. The thing is, it's very static, so you can just learn it. But it's it's also quite annoying. Uh, here I'm losing uh, this life. So this is pretty much one-on-one -on -one with my final life against Gara. Um, the hand pattern is, again, kind of difficult. Uh, so the blue hands... Uh, blue wave is uh, aimed at you uh, and the um, the purple one is always aimed towards the bottom of the screen but she can trap you see here i got trapped there are two ways she can trap you uh, either you get too far and she sort of you know blocks too too much of the screen like what's happening here uh, or she moves to the top of the screen and then she can block your way out because um, you know you can't go through her so here here i didn't want to uh, try it because I might have gone hit if I went through her so I'm just trying to play super super cautious uh, have a bit of shield this is doable but I can also lose the run really easily so this point I just want to play safe and secure you know I've played played this for many hours um, I did feel pretty confident at this point uh, and I think here I can sort of just use the shield yeah to finish her off she has just a sliver of life um, and so I remember being pretty nervous but I did manage to pull through uh, and get the clear. And so now we'll get to the ending. Um, this, again, I'm pretty happy about this clear. It's a game I've wanted to clear for a while. Ever since I started playing shmups uh, about 18 months ago, uh, I'd say. Maybe a bit less than that. <coughs> it's my fifth cave clear. Definitely the hardest. Um... But I think you know, if, if, without the slow down thing, slow down thing, I think it would be uh, would be a lot a lot easier. Um, I might spend a bit more time on it to try and clear it with the other characters, but we'll see. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, you know, let me know if you have any questions about the game, about the run, or anything. Um, this is a really cool one. The thing, you know, even though I know I've complained about it, it has a lot of personality. It has a lot of character. So it's a very special game. I think in terms of design, this is my favorite cave game. Even over, over games like uh, Futari, maybe even Katsui. I think it's, it's just really cool. So, you know, give it a try if you're curious. Um, I hope you enjoyed this run. Let me know what you think in the comments um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.